Hey everyone, Ben from Snowboard Gamer. Welcome to episode 50 of This Week in Board Games. In this weekly show, I share with you all the games we played this week and do a spotlight on one of them, go over any interesting board game news and show any new purchases. I also host monthly giveaways and top five lists. So if you like board games as much as I do, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any content. I'm filming from Las Vegas this week where we're on vacation, so the lighting is not great. I apologize for that. And this is our hotel room with the view of the strip in the background. You can see the Paris Hotel. In this episode, I'm doing a spotlight of the game, The Mind. I'll also share with you all the games we played. At the end of this episode, I've got a mini vlog of our trip to Vegas, which includes a trip to the Meepleville Board Game Cafe and playing some board games with my cousins. The Mind is for two to four players ages eight and up and plays in 15 minutes and was recently nominated for the Spiel des Jahres, which is the German board game of the year. In The Mind, there is a deck of cards numbered one to a hundred. You are working cooperatively to beat the game. In a four player game, you are trying to get past level eight. A three player game goes to level 10 and a two player game goes to level 12. On each level, everyone gets dealt a number of cards equal to the current level. In level one, everyone gets one card, level two, two cards, etc. The goal is to play everyone's cards in numerical order from lowest to highest in a single face-up discard pile in the middle of the table. The team starts with lives equal to the number of players and one shuriken. Once cards are dealt, everyone enters the concentration phase. When each player is ready to start, they place their hand on the table. Once everyone's hands are on the table, everyone lifts their hands up and play begins. There is no turn order. Whoever thinks that they have the lowest card plays first. You cannot speak to each other. You can only look into one another's eyes and try to read their mind. Play continues with everyone playing their lowest card and trying to collectively get the cards played in order. If someone plays a card higher than a card in your hand, play halts and the team loses one life. All cards less than the card that was played are discarded. Everyone enters concentration phase and play resumes on the current level without restarting. A player can suggest at any time that the team uses a shuriken by raising a hand. If all players raise their hands and agree, then everyone discards their lowest card face up in front of them. This gives the table more information and can help complete the level. After beating a level, all 100 cards are shuffled and you move to the next level. Certain levels have rewards that you get for beating the level, either another life or another shuriken. When all of your lives are gone, the game is over. If you successfully get past the max level, then you beat the game. I've got Kinsey on this week to talk about the mind. We got this on Wednesday and we played it eight times the first day. What did you think? <laughs> I really like this game. It's really fun. It's simple. It's easy to learn. It's easy to teach. And it you kind of have to know who you're playing with and it really helps you get to know them better. Yeah, you kind of get better over time the more you play it with the same group of people. Mm -hmm. Because you learn what their style of playing is and kind of how they play. If they're really holding out, then you know they might have a higher number. And if they're kind of like hesitating, they might have a kind of low number. But it really depends on who you're playing with. Yeah, we've started to kind of talk in between games about a little bit of strategy. You can't talk during the game. For example, if you have a number one to five, immediate play. Six to 10 is... So you kind of hesitate a little bit, and then like one to five you play and you're kind of like, mm -hmm. and then you play it. 10 through 20, you're kind of just like, wait to see what plays, and then you're like, okay. Yeah, and if you have a teen as your lowest card, that's tough. It, yeah, it really is. You kind of wait, and if nobody plays within the first few seconds, then maybe you slowly play your team card and hope that it's not a high teen and someone else has, mm -hmm. like, like if I had 18 and someone else had 15, that would be kind of yeah. terrible. I want to talk about one story in, in a game we played. <laughs> we got down to the last three cards and I had two of them and Kinsey had one. I had a 95 and a 97. And I had a 98. And we were at a stalemate for what, five minutes? Yeah. And then finally I said, okay, fine, I'm gonna play my 95. She must have a really high 90 number card. So I played my 95 and I hesitated slightly. I should have gone 95, 97. Because what Kinsey did is played her 98 and then we lost a guy. Yeah. And, and looking back on it now, there was only one chance where hesitation made sense as if she had the 96. So it was a better chance of me just to play quickly. There were three cards, 98, 99, and 100 that she could have had on the other end. So it would have been better for me to just play them both quickly. Yeah, we've also had ones where we had like, I had 36, 38, 42, and 45. And then one of our friends, I don't remember who, they had like a 40 
and then like 43 and it was it was mad it was hard yeah that's really tough when you have a bunch of them clustered together but losing a life kind of helps then if someone played that 43 and there were five cards less than that mm -hmm. you discard them all and you move on yeah so the the shurikens I don't think we've used these enough. Yeah, I think we've kind of underestimated them. We're just, they're like there, but then we forget that they're there, and then we don't use them, and then when we do use them, it's like, we need to use these more often. Yeah, and it stinks when you lose the game and you're sitting there with one or two shurikens, mm -hmm. and you're thinking, ah, we should have used those. Yeah. All right, any negatives, Kinsey? Um, I would say that it's just kind of hard. <laughs> it is hard. <laughs> 20 times we've played this game and we've never beat it once. I think the max level we got to is six in a four player game. Yeah. Who do you think this game is for and who do you think it's not for? Hmm. I think this is for people who are like into more of the light, quick, easier games. They're, it's easy to teach, easy to learn. 15 minutes. 15 minutes long, yeah. It's not a deeply strategic game and there isn't very much strategy in it. Like there is some strategy in it, but I wouldn't say it's all strategy. I guess one negative would be you can get a bad deal where mm -hmm. Kinsey said that all the cards are close together and it's just difficult. I like how it's cooperative because a lot of games aren't cooperative. This game reminds me similarly of Hanabi, the game with fireworks and stuff. Right, it, because you're trying to read other people and, and figure out mm -hmm. what they're thinking. That's why they call it the mind. You're reading each other's minds. Mm-hmm. You're thinking lettuce. Burger lettuce. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thanks for coming. Thanks for coming on, Kinsey. Yeah. I hope you enjoyed that spotlight. Let's get right into all the games we played this week. We played a lot, nine different games. Six of them were new to me. What I'm gonna do is rapid fire 30 seconds on each one. First, we played Abrica, what? This is for two to five players, ages eight and up, and plays in 20 to 30 minutes. My cousins taught me this game. You're a wizard trying to cast spells, and everyone has five different spells in front of them, but you can't see what they are, and you can see everyone else's at the table. And on your turn, you try and cast a spell, and if you actually have it, then the spell goes through. If you don't, you lose some life. Fourth of July, we're hanging out with my cousins and teaching us what game, Will? Abracada what? <laughs> No, what's it called? Ever could have what? There you go. <laughs> okay, we're gonna do Will's turn. Night Singer. Oh my gosh, you have it! <laughs> <laughs> Blizzard. Ew. I'm gonna go with <laughs> Night Singer. Yes. Four. Got it. Whew, that was a close one. Oh, one of the secret spell stones. Okay. It's a fun game. We're going to definitely look at getting that one. Next, we played Captain Sonar. Chris and Wendy from the Meeple Overboard podcast taught this to us and our family. This game is for two to eight players, ages 14 and up, and plays in 45 to 60 minutes. It took us a little longer because it was our first time playing. It's team-based battleship, basically. You put this wall in between everyone, and then you've got different roles. One person is the captain, one person is the radio person who's listening to the other captain yell out the commands of where they move their ship. Another person is arming the weapons to fire, and you're trying to take out the other person's sub. We really enjoyed Captain Sonar and it's good that it goes up to eight players. The next game we played is Karuba the card game. This is for two to six players ages eight and up and plays in 10 to 15 minutes. Very quick game. Everyone has their own deck of cards with these paths and you're trying to connect the explorer to the temple of their same color and if they collect gems along the road they get extra points and you play them in a little four by four grid. Very quick and easy fun card game. I enjoyed Karuba the card game. The next game I played is Welcome to dot dot dot. I don't know who thought of this name but it's kind of ridiculous welcome to dot 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 like 
Anyway, Welcome To is for 1 to 100 players, ages 10 and up, and plays in 25 minutes. The reason it says to 100 players is that you could literally play as many as you wanted to. You're building houses in the neighborhood. It is a, what they call a roll and write game, but there's no dice to roll. You actually flip cards over, and you're writing numbers in these three rows of the neighborhood. You're drawing fences in between them, trying to group houses together. If you put a pool number in a pool spot, then you get bonus points. And so there's all these different ways that you can score. I really enjoyed it. I didn't think I would enjoy it that much, but surprisingly, I did. The next game we played is Broom Service. This is for two to five players ages 10 and up and plays in 60 to 75 minutes. In Broom Service, everyone is a witch and you're delivering potions to different spots around the board. It won the Kenner Spiel des Jahres, which is the connoisseur board game of the year, several years ago. Broom Service has a trick-taking element in it, which is fascinating because everyone has the same 10 cards. You choose four of them to play, and when you play your cards, you either choose the brave or the cowardly action. Cowardly is guaranteed. The brave action action only goes through if you're the last one to play the brave action. So if you play the brave and then someone after you plays the brave, they basically trump you and then they get the brave action. And so you're moving your witches around, you're getting potions, you're delivering them for points. I enjoyed broom service. The next game we played is One Night Ultimate Werewolf. One Night Ultimate Werewolf is for three to 10 players, ages eight and up and plays in 10 minutes. I gave it another shot, we were at my cousin's house, and it was a little bit more fun than last time I played, and I'm still not totally on board of this game. I just find it a little bit too chaotic of a game. Still though, I'll play it if people bring it out. I just don't think I'm gonna buy it. The next game we played is Werebeast. We taught this to my cousins, and they really enjoyed it. Werebeast is a set collection game for three to 10 players ages eight and up and plays in 15 minutes. You're collecting certain werebeasts, but you have to keep it secret. If somebody finds out what you're collecting, they can call you out and get you out of the game. But if you're wrong on an accusation, you're out of the game. So you need to be careful about your accusations. Dad, you're collecting Were-Shark. Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> the seven-year-old won both games of Werebeast. She was super coy, started collecting the were kittens. Everyone thought she was collecting were kittens, and she wasn't. That was really fun to see a seven-year-old work the whole table, including five adults. I don't know how I forgot this, but we played Altiplano this week. We taught my cousins the game. It is for two to five players, ages 12 and up, and plays in one to two hours. This is a fun one where you're raising alpacas and being a farmer in the high plains of the Andes somewhere between Peru and Bolivia. If you haven't entered the giveaway yet, I'm giving away a copy of it on my channel right now. It ends July 15th. Go check that out. Altiplano is a really fun one. And now for the news. There was only one interesting thing in the board game news that I found this week. The game Imhotep, Imhotep, whatever you call it, is coming out with a two-player version called Imhotep Duel. That sounds interesting. I really like that game. So I'll be interested to see what the two-player version is like. For my new purchases this week, I was at the Meepleville Board Game Cafe, and I like supporting them whenever I come into town. I bought the expansion for Potion Explosion. This is a game we've played a lot of the last few months, and one of Allison's favorites. This is called the Fifth Ingredient in Ads, I believe. This white marble, which is ghost ectoplasm, and it's uh, some sort of a wild, I think. We're excited to try this one out. And now for our mini vlog of our trip to Las Vegas, including a trip to the Meepleville Board Game Cafe. Here in Vegas for the week of July 4th, staying at the Cosmopolitan. I wore my blue shirt because we're going to see Blue Man Group tonight. You're gonna wear your blue shirt to blue? Yeah, my blue shirt for Blue Man Group. Let's go. I'm gonna start calling you Tobias. We are in the Luxor about to go see Blue Man Group and I wore my blue shirt. So we just finished watching Blue Man Group and they, there's this part of the show where bananas sprayed out of their costume and it nailed me on the shirt and in my hair, it's all crusty now and it got all over me. First stop today, the Bellagio. Next stop, Caesar's Palace.
next stop, the Flamingo. We're now in New York, New York, and we're heading to ride the roller coaster that goes through the hotel and outside. Next stop, the Venetian. We are now headed to the high roller, that giant Ferris wheel. It's a 30 minute ride all the way around it. We are on the high roller, almost to the top, 550 feet above the Vegas Strip. Check it out. It is 2 a.m. We're hanging out in the lobby of the hotel playing The Mind. Travis is trying to beat my what? card. And we're at a stand, we're, we're stalling. Travis, show yours, what's yours? <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> We're now at the Meepleville Board Game Cafe. It's about 15 minutes off the strip. We're gonna go inside. They have over 2,000 games. Let's go check it out. We're hanging out at the Meepleville Board Game Cafe. We've got Chris and Wendy. Introduce yourself, guys. Giuseppe. We, uh, so Chris and Wendy taught us Captain Sonar first. That was a lot of fun. Kind of like Battleship, but team-based, where you're chasing each other's submarine, trying to uh, destroy it. And then we played Karuba the card game. Yep, all right. We played uh, six player with that. And then with Giuseppe and Summer, they taught us welcome to your perfect home. Both of them have an online presence. Check out Chris and Wendy. They do a great job with their podcast. Why don't you uh, say a little bit about it? It's called Meeple Overboard. It's a 30 minute podcast we do every Saturday. Yep, and you can check us out on Instagram. And Twitter. Yeah. Awesome. I'll put links down below. And Giuseppe? You can follow us on Instagram at Board Game Diner, where we post all our board games. Awesome. While we were sitting in the hotel room here, I thought of a joke, so I figured I'd share it with you. What do you call it when a T Rex falls asleep at the wheel? Dinosaurus Rex. Dumb. My family's cracking up over there. They think it's really hilarious. No, we don't. No, we don't. It's we definitely don't. Actually, they're making fun of me. True story. Get it, Kinsey? Like he wrecks his car? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is it for this week in board games. Thanks for watching, everyone. What games are you playing? Also, are there any games you would like to see me spotlight? Leave that in the comments below. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and we'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Bye. <laughs>